Because of my childhood, I murdered more than 14 people at a university. Hi everyone, I'm Mark Lapine, and I want to share my story. I became one of Canada's most dangerous mass murderers, who in 1989 killed 14 women and wounded 10 more women and 4 men at the École Polytechnique de Montréal, an engineering school affiliated with the University of Montreal, in the École Polytechnique massacre. I was born in Montreal, the son of Canadian nurse Monique Lapine and Algerian businessman Rashid Garbay. My younger sister and I lived with other families and saw our mother on the weekends. I was considered bright but withdrawn and had difficulties in my relationships with family and my peers. My application to join the Canadian forces was rejected, and in 1982, I started a science program at a university, and after a year I switched to a more technical program. I started a computer programming course in 1988 and dropped out again before completing it. I applied for admission to the Ecole Polytechnique twice, but I was missing two mandatory courses. For a long time I complained that women took on non-traditional jobs. In a moment of anger and rage, I went to college and wreaked havoc. I shot several women and then moved to other parts of the building, targeting only women before taking my own life. My actions have been variously attributed from a psychiatric perspective, with diagnoses such as personality disorder, psychosis, or attachment disorder, highlighting social factors such as poverty, isolation, powerlessness, and media violence. Criminologists see the massacre as an example of a hate crime against women, while feminists and government officials see it as a misogynistic attack and an illustration of the broader problem of violence against women. I was born Gamal Rodrigue Lias Garbay on October 26, 1964. My father was a mutual fund salesman and was traveling in the Caribbean at the time of my birth. He was a non-practicing Muslim and my mother was a former Catholic nun who had rejected organized religion after leaving the convent. The family returned permanently to Montreal in 1968, shortly before a stock market crash led to the loss of a significant portion of my family's assets. My father was an authoritarian, possessive and jealous man, often violent towards his wife and children. He despised women and believed they were meant to serve men exclusively. In 1970, after an incident in which my father hit me so hard that the marks on my face were visible a week later, my mother decided to leave. The visits quickly ceased when my father cut off contact with us shortly after the separation. He stopped paying child support after making the payments twice. To make ends meet, my mother went back to being a nurse. During this time, my brother and I lived with other families during the week and saw our mother only on weekends. Worried about her children and her skills as a mother, she sought help for the family from a psychiatrist at a hospital. After the divorce was finalized in 1976, the two of us, who were then 12 and 9 years old, went back to live with our mother, who was director of nursing at a hospital in Montreal. In 1977, the family moved into a purchased house in the middle-class suburb of Montreal. Ridiculed as an Arab by my name, at the age of 14 I legally changed it to Mark Lapine, citing my hatred of my father as a reason for adopting my mother's surname. I was uncommunicative and showed little emotion. I fantasized about my death and even once created a mock tomb. In search of a positive male role model for me, my mother got a partner, who was said to be an abuser, but both my older brother and I denied that any abuse had occurred. When I was a teenager, I had an air rifle that I used to shoot pigeons near my house with a friend. I developed an interest in World War II and an admiration for Adolf Hitler, enjoying action and horror movies. I also took on important responsibilities around the home, including cleaning and repairs while my mother worked. I applied to join the Canadian Forces as an officer cadet in September 1981, at the age of 17, but was rejected during the interview process. In 1982, at the age of 18, we moved to St. Laurent, closer to my mother's job. In August 1982, I began a two-year pre-university course in pure sciences at the Cégep de St. Laurent, failing two courses in the first semester, but improving my grades considerably in the second semester. I worked part-time at the hospital where my mother worked, serving food and doing custodial duties. My colleagues saw me as nervous, hyperactive, and immature. I moved from my mother's house to my own apartment, and in 1986, I applied to study engineering at the École Polytechnique de Montréal. 
In 1987 I was fired from my job at the hospital for aggressive behavior, disrespect for my superiors, and neglect of my work. My friends noticed that I became unpredictable and that I would get angry when I felt frustrated. In the fall of 1987, to complete my undergraduate studies, I took three courses and got good grades in all of them. In February 1988, I started a computer programming course at a private university in downtown Montreal, financing my studies with government student loans. I moved into a downtown apartment with my old high school friend, and in the winter of 1989, I took a SEGEP evening course in solution chemistry, a prerequisite for the Akal Polytechnique. I wanted a girlfriend, but I was generally uncomfortable with women. I would be condescending to women and flaunt my knowledge in front of them. I talked to men about my distaste for feminists, professional women, and women in traditionally male-dominated occupations such as law enforcement, and stated that women should stay home and take care of their families. In April 1989, I met with an admissions officer and complained about how women were taking the job market away from men. In August 1989 I picked up an application for a firearms acquisition certificate and received my permit in mid-October. Between October and December 1989 I was seen at the Polytechnic School at least seven times. I also stopped paying the rent for the apartment. Previously, I had always been very punctual in my rent payments, but I hadn't paid it that December. On December 6, 1989, I entered the Akal Polytechnique. There I walked into a second-floor classroom where I separated men and women and then ordered approximately 50 men out. Claiming to be fighting feminism, I shot the remaining nine women, killing six and wounding the rest. Subsequently, I moved to other areas of the building, including the cafeteria, hallways, and another classroom. A total of 14 women were killed and four men and 10 women were injured before I took my own life. Do you think that if I had gone to experts, none of this would have happened? Let me know in the comments. In my jacket pocket they found a three-page suicide note. In the letter, I alleged political motives, blamed feminists for ruining my life, and expressed admiration for Dennis Lordy, who had organized a politically motivated attack on the Quebec National Assembly in 1984, killing three government employees. The letter also contained a list of 19 women whom he apparently wanted to kill for their feminism. Another letter, written to a friend, promised that the explanation for the massacre would be found by following the clues left in my apartment. The authorities discovered more letters around the apartment, but they couldn't determine exactly what led me to commit this massacre. Some think it was because of my extreme hatred of feminists. Others believe that it was a bomb box, since many values and aspects came together throughout my life, which could have caused the bomb to explode in the end. One of those aspects was my father figure, who was very macho, my nice feelings towards dictators, my paranoid and manipulative disorder and of course my adoration of guns and violence. Finally, I was buried in Montreal's Notre Dame de Neige Cemetery, a few blocks from where I committed the massacre. If you want more stories like this, don't forget to subscribe and activate the campaign so you don't miss the next one. Also, you would help us a lot by leaving a like and sharing my story. Thank you so much for watching the video to the end.